Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH64D video, we'll discuss the symbology projected to the helmet display unit, or HDU. This is part of the larger integrated helmet display and sighting system, or IADS. The HDU can be worn by either the pilot or the co-pilot gunner, or CPG, and it can display important navigation, sensor, and weapon systems data to the crew member's right eye. We'll discuss the HDU early in this tutorial series as we're referring to it in later lessons. The HDU can be toggled on and off by pressing the I key. The physical monocle that the HDU is displayed on can be toggled on and off. From the Options, Special tab, AH64D page, check or uncheck the IHADS monocle visible box. To adjust the brightness of the HDU display, rotate the symbol brightness knob in the pilot cockpit and the TDAC symbol brightness rocker in the CPG cockpit. There are four HDU display modes that can be selected from the Symbology Select switch on Cyclic. Cruise C, Transition T, Hover H, and Baba B. When selected, these only affect the HDU display. They do not affect the flight control system. There are two general formats of HDU symbology, flight symbology and weapon symbology. For this video, we'll discuss the flight symbology, and we'll discuss the weapon symbology in later weapon lessons. When you enter hot aircraft, cruise mode will be selected by default. Let's discuss the display elements. Along the top is the magnetic heading tape with a lever line in the center that indicates your heading in degrees. The solid triangle is the bank angle indication, also known as the bank angle triangle. The open chevron along the bottom of the heading tape is the command heading chevron and indicates the direction of your selected direct to as selected on the tactical situation display or TSD. We'll discuss the TSD and its functions in a later video. The line of sight reticle, consisting of two vertical and two horizontal lines with an open center, is centered in the HDU and provides a fixed reference for aircraft pitch attitude and for weapons aiming. It will flash when the line of sight is invalid or when the NVS mode switch is in the norm position and the TADs or the PINVIS are at their slew limits. Queuing dots can be located on the tips of the line of sight reticle and indicate the direction of the selected acquisition source. An acquisition source can be one of several things that include a pilot and gunner's helmet sights, a TADS, a stored waypoint or hazard, a control measure, target or threat, and more. When the acquisition source is located within the HDU field of view, it is indicated by the queued line of sight reticle consisting of two broken vertical and two broken horizontal lines with an open center. The flight path vector, or FBV, is much like that of a fixed-wing aircraft HUD velocity vector symbol and indicates the flight vector of the aircraft. Essentially, the aircraft will fly to the location of the FPV. This can be very helpful when flying nap of the Earth. It also serves to alert the crew of the precise location for their future scene of crash, assuming no other inputs are made. The large, segmented diamond is the head tracker, and represents your head position relative to the nose of the aircraft. The navigation fly to cue or home plate symbol indicates the location of your currently selected TSD navigation direct to. Centered in the HDU is the horizon line and pitch ladder in 10 degree increments. At the top right side of the HDU and cruise mode is the digital barometric altimeter and below that is the vertical speed indicator scale in the digital radar altitude readout. The vertical speed indicator, represented by the filled in carrot, indicates the current rate of climb in reference to a scale of 100 feet per minute increments up to a maximum of 1,000 feet per minute, after which a digital readout will display the extended rate of climb or descent. When the VSI is centered, the aircraft is in level flight. The solid bar on the scale indicates altitude from 0 to 200 feet AGL in 10 foot small increments and 50 foot large increments. Above 200 feet AGL, the bar is removed from the scale. In the bottom right corner is the selected acquisition source, in this case Waypoint 2, 
The source can be selected from different MPD pages, such as the weapon and TSD pages. We'll talk about this in a later video. At the top left side is the engine torque value, and below that is the turbine gas temperature, or TGT. TGT is only displayed when nearing an engine limitation. In the center left of the display is the aircraft's current true airspeed. In the bottom left, we have the waypoint status window that displays the currently selected direct to, distance, ground speed, and estimated time and route to this point. Along the bottom is the high action display. In the top left corner of the high action display is the site select status, which is currently pilot HMD. Below this is the site status window. To the right of the site select status is the range and range source to our currently selected acquisition source. Range sources can be manual M, navigation N, laser asterisk, default 1.5 for pilot and 3.0 for CPG, and others. The bottom center is dominated by the field of regard box. Within the field of regard, the field of view box is displayed. The edge of the box marks the azimuth limit for the selected sensor. For TADS, it is 120 degrees left and right in azimuth and plus 30 to minus 60 degrees in elevation. For PINVIS, it is 90 degrees left and right in azimuth and plus 20 and minus 45 degrees in elevation. Within the field regard is the queued line of sight dot that indicates the relative location of the selected acquisition source. Above the box is the trim ball, and most aviators consider its location between the two vertical lines a transit condition. Professionals, unlike me, I keep it centered. To switch to transition mode, press forward on the Symbology Select switch. Pressing the switch forward will toggle between cruise and transition modes. Transition mode declutters cruise mode by removing the digital barometric altimeter, the pitch ladder, bank angle triangle, and the horizon line is represented by a broken horizontal line. From the center of the line of sight reticle, the velocity vector line indicates the magnitude and direction of the aircraft's velocity relative to the nose of the aircraft. Its point of origin is approximately the rotor mast. When in transition mode, it indicates 60 knots of ground speed at full deflection. In hover and bob up, it indicates a maximum of 6 knots of ground speed at full deflection. The small circle is the acceleration cue, and it can be thought of as the position of the cyclic. It should be noted that wherever the acceleration cue is positioned, the velocity vector will follow. It can be used to precisely maintain a constant ground speed, which is useful during nap of the Earth flight or when a precise time on target is required. Pressing aft on the symbology select switch selects hover mode. When below 6 knots, this is your mode of choice when picking up, hovering, and landing. When in hover mode and compared to transition mode, the waypoint and acquisition source data and the horizon line are removed. Pressing aft again on the symbology select switch toggles to the bob up mode. When selected, an octagon known as the bob up box is placed in the center of the HDU and this marks the point below your aircraft when initiated. By moving the aircraft forward and back and side to side, you can keep the line of sight reticle inside the octagon to maintain your hover position. The box represents a 12 square foot area. At full scale deflection, the aircraft has traveled 40 feet from starting position. This can be a useful mode when conducting a pop-up attack from behind cover in a confined area. When operating at night, the pilot night vision system or PINVIS or the TADS FLIR video can be projected to the HDU. By setting the NVS mode switch to the norm position on the tailwheel unlock and NVS mode panel, the FLIR sensors will follow the HDU line of sight. If the switch is set to fixed, it will be locked forward along the aircraft's longitudinal axis. To adjust the FLIR video image on the HDU, the outside knob of the FLIR knob controls the gain, and the inside knob controls the level. To the left is the iHATS knob in which the inside knob controls video brightness, and the outside knob controls video contrast. 
When in the pilot seat, you'll most often use the pin vis for night navigation with the TADS as a backup. To switch between pin vis and TADS, the NVS select switch on the collective can be set to either pin vis or TADS. Be aware though, if the CPG is using the TADS for targeting and you select NVS select TADS, you'll have a very grumpy gunner as they will be staring at a black screen from that point forward. When NVS is enabled, FLIR is displayed above the engine torque indication on the HDU. When in the CPG seat, the NVS mode switch acts the same, and it disables the TAS as a site selection from the TDAC grip. FLIR video is controlled by the brightness and contrast rocker switches on the TDAC. You can also toggle the polarity of the video by pressing the Foresight slash polarity button on the collective. I hope you enjoyed this video on the flight elements of the HDU and thank you for watching.